The moment you woke up today, time seemed to move forward, hour by hour, minute by minute, an unbroken river flowing toward the future. But what if that river is not a straight line? What if it is a spiral, a labyrinth, a loop? For thousands of years, mystics whispered of something the modern world is only beginning to rediscover. Cycles in time, invisible loops that bend destiny back upon itself. In the temples of Egypt, the priests of Thoth guarded scrolls that spoke of days that return, moments faded to repeat until the soul's lesson is complete. Across the ocean, in the Vedic traditions of India, time was not linear at all, but an eternal wheel, the Kala Chakra, turning endlessly carrying us through patterns we thought we'd escaped. And now, quantum physics, with its strange, unyielding paradoxes, begins to echo these ancient voices. Experiments hint at particles that influence not only the future, but the past. A decision you make tomorrow might already be reshaping who you were yesterday. This is the mystery of quantum time loops not the science fiction cliché of being trapped in a single day, but a far deeper truth, that moments in your life, whether minutes or entire lifetimes apart, may be connected in a hidden architecture of recurrence. The choices you think are spontaneous may be echoes from decisions you haven't yet made. In this video, we will step into the hidden corridors of time. We'll explore how sages and scientists alike have described loops in reality, why they exist, and, most importantly, how you can become conscious within them. Because once you see the loop, you can bend it. You can reshape destiny itself. This is not a passive journey. As you listen, watch for strange feelings of deja vu, sudden memories, or the uncanny sense that you've heard these words before. That is not coincidence. It may be your first sign that you are already inside a loop. By the end of our journey, you will not look at time the same way again. Because the question is no longer, where are you going? The real question is, how many times have you already been there? Long before Einstein bent time with mathematics, the ancients bent it with myth. In the shadowed halls of the Egyptian temple at Abydos, walls bear the figure of the god He, guardian of endless time, holding the symbol of infinity in each hand. To the high initiates of Thoth, time was not a straight road, but a divine serpent swallowing its own tail. The Ouroboros, eternal return. They taught that certain events were not simply once and done, but would spiral back into your life until you mastered their hidden lesson. A quarrel, a meeting, a love, a loss, returning in new forms, like actors changing costumes in an endless play. In the Hindu and Buddhist traditions, this principle became the Kala Chakra, the Wheel of Time. Here, the very fabric of existence is woven from cycles, cosmic seasons, karmic loops, and subtle recurrences that stretch across lifetimes. To them, your life is not a single journey from birth to death. It is a turning wheel, and if you miss the lesson, the wheel brings it back again. Even in the forgotten stone circles of the Druids, rituals were aligned with precise astronomical points. Moments in the heavens they believed were open gates, where past, present, and future touched. These weren't mere superstitions. They were attempts to step into the thin places of time, where the loop could be seen and changed. Philosophers, too, caught glimpses of this truth. The Stoics spoke of eternal recurrence, that all events repeat endlessly. Nietzsche later resurrected this idea, not as a scientific claim, but as a challenge. If you had to live this life again, in every detail, forever, would you curse it or embrace it? Why then, has this knowledge been buried? Partly because a world that believes in loops, 
does not obey the same rulers. If time is cyclical, destiny is not the iron chain we are told it is. It is clay in our hands. Monarchs, empires, and later industrial society needed people to believe in a straight timeline, past behind, future ahead, progress marching in one direction. The myth of the loop was inconvenient, and yet the loops persisted, hidden in scripture, coded in symbols, whispered by mystics, until modern science, almost reluctantly, began to confirm what shamans and sages already knew. At the quantum scale, time is not a one-way street. Particles communicate across the past and future, like notes passed through hidden corridors. And if matter behaves this way, what of mind? What of consciousness? Here lies the heart of our exploration. Not just that loops exist, but that you are inside them right now. Your instincts, your deja vu, your repeating dreams, these are not trivial oddities. They may be signs that your destiny is folding back upon itself, offering you a chance, perhaps your last chance, to choose differently. Imagine standing in a vast library. Each book is a life you could live, some already written, some still blank. The shelves don't stretch in a straight line from yesterday to tomorrow. They spiral upward and downward, curling back on themselves like a staircase made of ink and light. Now, here is the paradox that quantum theory whispers. You are not simply walking forward through the shelves. You are constantly skipping between them. And sometimes, you land back on a page you've already read without realizing it. At the smallest scale of reality, particles have been observed to behave as though time is not fixed. In delayed choice experiments, a particle's past behavior seems to change depending on a decision made in the future. This is not philosophy, it's physics. And if matter can loop in this way, what stops consciousness from doing the same? Ancient traditions intuited this long before laboratories confirmed it. They taught that our choices radiate out in all directions of time, not just forward. That means your future self might be reaching back right now, nudging you toward a path that has already walked. But here's the secret no one tells you. Time loops are not punishment. They are invitations. They arise when there is something essential you have not yet integrated. A lesson ignored becomes a pattern. A pattern becomes a loop. And the loop becomes your invisible prison until you awaken inside it. This is why you meet the same kind of person again and again, even in different places, different years. It's why you keep facing the same obstacle, no matter how many times you change jobs, cities, or partners. On the surface, these events seem unrelated, but in the architecture of time, they may be points on the same spiral. Think of a spiral staircase. Every turn feels like a new floor, but look down from above and you'll see you've been revolving around the same center all along. That center is the unresolved truth your soul is orbiting. Recognizing this is the first step in reshaping destiny. You cannot break a loop you cannot see, and loops hide in the most convincing disguises Different faces, new cities, changed circumstances, yet the emotional imprint is identical. The sting of betrayal, the rush of infatuation, the heaviness of loss, these are signatures, quantum fingerprints of a repeating pattern. And when you finally spot one, something strange happens. The loop itself seems to tremble, as though it knows it's been seen. Small coincidences increase. The air feels charged. You may even sense that certain moments are watching you back. This is where most stop, either afraid or skeptical. But the true work, the bending of destiny, begins when you don't just notice the loop. You step into it consciously. If part one showed us that loops exist, part two takes us inside their machinery. 
And here's the first thing you must understand. A time loop is not a circle in the way a clock's hands trace hours. It's more like a Mobius strip. On the surface, it seems to have two sides, past and future. But when you follow it long enough, you realize there is only one continuous surface. Past bleeds into future, and future bleeds into past, without a clear boundary. This means your memory may not be a record of what has happened, but a mixture of what has already occurred and what has yet to occur. Those flashes of deja vu, those prophetic dreams, that gut feeling that something has happened before. These are not hallucinations. They are glimpses across the fold, moments where your consciousness brushes against the other side of the strip. The ancients spoke of this in different tongues. The Mayans tracked vast cycles called baktuns, believing history itself repeated in cosmic harmonies. The Tibetan masters taught that dreams and waking life were not separate, but layered loops of perception. Even the Hermeticists hinted at the idea in the axiom, as above, so below, as within, so without. This is more than poetic symmetry. It's a description of how patterns in your inner world project into the outer and then return to you again. But here's the twist modern science brings to the table. In the quantum model, a loop doesn't just replay events, it can mutate them. This is why your loops are never exact copies. Each repetition carries slight variations, different people, altered circumstances, new emotional tones. These are like test runs, offering multiple paths to break free or go deeper. The danger is in ignoring the variation. If you miss it, the loop tightens. You go from subtle deja vu to life-altering deja vu, massive events that feel eerily faded. The ancients warned of this too. In Sufi mysticism, they spoke of the narrowing of the circle, where a soul that refuses to learn is given fewer and fewer choices until it awakens or breaks. And yet paradoxically, the tighter the loop, the more potent the opportunity. Because in those moments, your free will is amplified. You are standing at a temporal crossroads where even the smallest decision can ripple both forward and backward in time. Change one element and the reverberation alters the entire spiral, past and future alike. Think about that. If you choose differently now, the version of you from years ago might already be living a different reality. This is not just mysticism. Retro-causality experiments in physics hint that such influence is possible at the particle level. And consciousness may be the ultimate particle. The loop is not your jailer. It is your teacher. It does not appear because you have failed, but because your soul loves you enough to give you another chance. Your destiny is not written in stone. It's written in wet clay spinning on the wheel of time. And with awareness, you can reach out, press your hands into it, and reshape it before it hardens. You've heard the theory, the history, the hidden mechanics. But here is where the spiral meets the ground, where you can actually do something with the knowledge of quantum time loops. The first skill is loop detection. Most people notice only the loud repetitions relationships ending in the same heartbreak, jobs collapsing for the same reasons. But the more subtle loops whisper in coincidences. Hearing the same phrase from two strangers in a day, stumbling upon the same symbol in unrelated contexts, or feeling the strange sense that a moment is already charged. Keep a loop journal, not just for dreams, but for patterns in waking life. Write down phrases, symbols, emotions that recur. Over weeks, you will see the loops revealing themselves like constellations in a night sky. The second skill is loop entry. When you detect a pattern, instead of reacting automatically, pause. The pause is sacred. It creates a crack in the machinery of the loop. In that stillness, become hyper-aware. What are you feeling? 
What options are on the table? Is there an urge to repeat an old reaction? This moment is the doorway. The third skill is loop bending. Breaking a loop is not always about making the opposite choice. Sometimes it's about introducing novelty. In a conversation that feels familiar, say something you've never said before. When faced with an old fear, take one small action toward it instead of away. This creates a ripple, and quantum systems are exquisitely sensitive to ripples. Even a slight change in initial conditions can shift the entire trajectory of events, both forward and backward. Ritual can amplify these shifts. In the Kalachakra tradition, monks meditate on the wheel of time itself, visualizing themselves moving into higher spirals of the pattern. You can adapt this by closing your eyes, picturing your life as a spiral staircase, and seeing yourself stepping onto the next turn, higher, lighter, freer. When you open your eyes, take one immediate action that reflects this next turn version of yourself. A warning. When you begin to bend loops, reality may respond quickly, too quickly for comfort. Sudden coincidences, strange meetings, or even the resurfacing of long-lost people can occur. Do not panic. These are signs the fabric is rearranging. Trust the process, but remain intentional. Unconscious choices can create new loops, just as easily as they dissolve old ones. Finally, remember, liberation is not about escaping all loops. Some loops are the very rhythm of life, the rising sun, the seasons, the heartbeat. The aim is not to step outside of time, but to become a conscious dancer within it, to know when the step repeats and when to improvise. Master these three skills, detection, entry, bending, and you will find that destiny becomes less of a sentence and more of a canvas. You will start to live in a conversation with time instead of being carried by it. The loops are already turning. They have been turning since before you were born since before the first thought you ever thought. But now, you see them. You have walked through the echoes of your own past, touched the possibility of your own future, and understood that destiny is not a single road. It is a spiral staircase you climb with every choice. Sometimes you return to the same place, but you are not the same person. And that difference changes everything. Remember, the loop is not your enemy. It is your mirror. It reflects the places where your soul is still in dialogue with itself, where the lesson is still alive, waiting to be integrated. The universe, in its mysterious compassion, allows you to meet the moment again and again until you meet it differently. When you sense deja vu, don't brush it off. When a pattern repeats, don't curse it. Lean in. Ask, what is this loop trying to teach me? Because inside that question is the power to bend the timeline, not just for the future you, but for the you that came before. And if you feel resistance, fear, or even disbelief, that's fine. The truth of loops does not demand belief. It reveals itself in your direct experience. One day, you'll make a choice, so unlike your old self, that reality will shiver around you. And you will know, without a shadow of doubt, that you have stepped onto a new spiral. So, as you leave this video, carry this with you. Every moment is both a seed and an echo. How you meet it shapes not just tomorrow, but yesterday. The loop bends to the hand that dares to reach for it. Now, I'll leave you with this question, one that may follow you into dreams. If you find yourself here again, in this same moment, hearing these same words, what will you choose differently next time?